All right, here are the ghostly blur shots taken as a class. Now we're going to make some decisions about which one to use and how to edit it. All right, so we've got um, a selection here along the bottom already imported into Lightroom. All right, so I'm going to be taking a look at um, what's happening in terms of the amount of blur, where people are, and the composition that I like the best. All right, so I've got about uh, four shots, five shots here, um, and what I'm looking for, this one was, uh, I think it was two second exposure, and you can see that some of the people are uh, blurred out so much they're barely visible. So I think I'm going to pass that one by. In this one, um, you still see people um, a lot more. I think the, the shutter speed was a lot less. I really lo love the people going up the stairs and those streaks there, um, but some of the people around our stationary subjects are too in focus, not a, not quite blurred enough for this. I want to have a nice contrast there. Um, so this one here um, is a strong contender for that, right? We've got some blurs happening, some interesting uh, blurs, not too many distracting elements from uh, Melina and Lisa. And here's our last one, all right? So I think I'm gonna go with this one, all right? So, um, if you, we've shot in the form, so the color isn't amazing, all right? We've got sort of flat lighting, um, so I think I'm going to choose to do a, a black and white edit, all right? So I'm in my, in Lightroom, the editing panel over here is on the right, okay, with the sliders, and we're going to go into black and white for an edit, and as soon as you hit black and white, you're going to get that um, uh, black and white window, and now I can be playing with my exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, the curves adjustment, and, and whatnot, all right? So if I wanted to make some of them more dramatic, I'm going to go and I'm going to bring down my blacks, all right, to, to get some more contrast. Um, that you can see there now that the, um, the different kind of streaks of uh, ghostly streaks are coming into perspective more, they're, they're a bit more contrasted, they're a bit more no noticeable. Um, I can take my curves adjustment layer and give myself a little bit more contrast if I want to. All right, you can see it's already um, darker, so um, my S-curve in this case is pretty subtle. All right, so I'm barely moving it off the line because I don't want to blow out the whites too much to make them too high. If I took this line and brought it up too high, um, I don't want to have that kind of... Uh, overly saturated white, so I, I, I just want that contrast up, brought up just a little bit like that. Um, and then depending on your shot, you can be playing with the, the exposure, the, um, you know, kind of like playing with the mood of the shot. If um, you bring the exposure down a little bit, that's going to make it more dramatic. Now, depending on what's happening in the shot as well, um, you might want to crop the shot, which is in our next panel down. All right, this is the cropping window. We are going to go into our aspect ratio, um, and we want to have it as original or a shot, or alternatively two by three, which is the aspect ratio. So when I go to crop it, it's not going to uh, change the aspect ratio. Um, so if I ever wanted to get this printed, this would be the proper aspect ratio. So I might crop it down just a little bit to get some uh, tighter on the action. All right, and double click to get that going. All right, and so there, there's my shot in the in the before edit. You can see this was um, clicking in the bottom right here. This is what it looked like before, and here we've got after. So we've got some really cool motion blur and edits um, in black and white. So give that a try. All right, I'm going to export my shot as a large JPEG, and that's what I'm going to be adding into my Google folder. Give it a try.